There's a discernment that comes from listening and reading. There's the discernment that comes from thinking things through. But the real discernment comes from developing qualities in the mind. This is one of the reasons why we're practicing concentration. Both because as the mind gets more still, you see things more clearly, but also as you deal with your defilements and getting the mind to settle down, you learn an awful lot. Which defilements you have to put off for a while, which defilements you have to deal with right away. Of course, learning how to recognize defilements as defilements. All too often we take them as our friends. As the Buddha said, we go through life with craving as our companion. We think it's our best friend. And it all too often it's the kind of friend who gets us to do something really bad. And then when the police come to, to catch us, the friend runs away. We're the ones left holding the bag. So as you get the mind to settle down, as you notice other things come up, don't feel too frustrated. You're giving yourself a chance to dig them out and not follow them. And you also, as you learn to see through these things, you see through their rationale, why you fell for them for that to begin with. And things become clearer and clearer in the mind. There's a passage where the Buddha compares the skills you learn through doing concentration to the skills of an archer. You can shoot long distances, fire shots in rapid succession, and pierce great masses. And those are three very different skills. Firing shots in rapid succession means that you see things quickly, recognize what's going on, you observe what's going on as it's happening. But to shoot great distances means you have to see the long term as well. These two skills seem to be going at in opposite directions sometimes. You want to see something quickly, come to a quick judgment, and act on it. But at the same time, you have to think about the long term, which means that you can't jump to conclusions. And many times when you have to withhold judgment, and you can't just go on your first impulse, you have to think about the long term. So those are two skills that pull in different directions. But to be a good meditator, you have to learn them both. It's like when I was first translating a John Lee, I asked a John Furung what I should do, whether I should try for a literal translation or one that really got to the meaning of the text. And he said both. Which forced me to become a better translator. Trying to keep both attitudes in mind, or both goals in mind at the same time. So you want to be quick, and you also want to take the long view. This means that when you're in the heat of a, a job, or heat of a difficult situation, you can't simply go with your impulses. Even in a situation like that, you've got to think about what would be for the long-term well-being of the job, the long-term well-being of the group, the long-term well-being of your own, your own goodness and your own happiness. That's a tall order. But the working on your concentration, getting to understand what it means to get the mind to settle down and to choose its thoughts, that's a skill that's going to help. It'll give you the strength to look for the long term and the powers of observation that allow you to see things quickly, recognize when something's going wrong, recognize when something's going right. And I give in to your greed, aversion, and delusion, so that you can develop that third skill, which is to pierce great masses. And this, the Buddha said, corresponds to piercing ignorance, where you really see how you're causing unnecessary suffering. You see that the problem lies inside, and you can see precisely the movements of the mind that are causing the suffering. You understand what their allure is, but you also see the drawbacks. 
so you can gain some escape from them. So remember, as we're meditating, it's a wide range of skills that we're developing here. And that instilling the mind is not simply a matter of beating the mind down. Because if you beat it down, then when it when the beating down ends, then it springs right back to its old ways. You want to develop some insight into your mind as it settles down. The insight that sees both what the mind would like, what skillful objects the mind would like, and how to produce those those objects. You can work with the breath, you can work with the different elements in the body. Whatever the mind finds intriguing, enjoyable here in the present moment. But at the same time, you have to gain some insight into your different hindrances or different distractions as they come up. Sometimes you can just give them a quick karate chop and they're gone. Other times when they come back, then you actively have to think about where they would lead you. And when you think about where they actually would lead you, you find part of the mind says, well, don't they also lead here? And oh, that's, a, that's a lead. It shows you some of the mind's reasons for wanting to think those thoughts. So that you recognize them more and more quickly. So that even when you're not meditating, you're in the, the heat of a day or the heat of a job, and something comes into the mind, you're better at judging where it comes from. But even then, you have to put it to the test. If something seems okay, you act on it, but then you have to be frank with yourself about the results. And if it didn't lead to good results, you've got to go back. Say, okay, I thought I understood something. I'm going to go back and reassess my powers of judgment. This is how you grow. This is how the Buddha grew. He went into his practice with some preconceived notions. He studied with some teachers who he thought would be good. And then he discovered there were limitations to their teachings. So then he decided he had to do self-torture. Well, that turned out to be a dead end as well. I taught him some good things about powers of endurance. But he realized that it would ultimately kill him and he wouldn't gain the results he wanted. So we had to try again. So this is the model he sets for us. It's all trial and error. We use our powers of judgment, and then we have to assess our past judgments to see how good they were. Learn to be quick at the same time that we're more penetrating, a little bit more patient when we're not fully sure of things. So we can develop that full range of skills, taking the long term, but also being quick to observe things right now, and learning how to balance those out so that the strength you develop in firing shots in rapid succession is the same strength that will help you shoot long distances, or at the very least they learn how to work together. That's when you can be complete in your mastery of the skills of meditation.